Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the Classic Eight here. I'm surfing the net earlier tonight, and I see that uh, Wrestling Observer. I'm not sure if it was tonight or, you know, earlier this week, but they released their um, awards for 2007. So I'm just gonna go over a couple of them, you know, give you my thoughts on, them and maybe counter a couple of them. So um, here we go. Basically, they got like like a Class A and a Class B set of awards. I'll just start with Class A. Um, pretty much, this is called the Luthez slash Ric Flair Award. It's pretty much the wrestler of the year. They, this, well, excuse me, this past year, they gave it to, uh, John Cena. Um, pretty much the outline of this award is pretty much anybody who can carry, who, who has the ability to carry a promotion by themselves. And that right there, uh, pretty much defines John Cena. 2007 was not the best year for WWE. They ended strong, but you know, they pretty much from WrestleMania to like, I guess like Survivor Series, they were pretty much at a low. And the only reason they were, you know, able to stay up that high is because of John Cena. You know, his drawing ability. So I have no problem with them choosing John Cena for the 2007 Wrestler of the Year. The most outstanding wrestler. Um, they last year they gave it to Brian Danielson. Who can argue against that? Um, pretty much, if you step in the ring with Brian Danielson, eleven times out of ten you're gonna lose the match um, because the guy is just that good. Um, one of the best technicians you will ever see in your life. Um, God, just so many dream matches with this guy can be done. I would love to see, but um, yeah, the guy is pretty much the best wrestler in the world. Like I said. When people throw that nickname for him, you know, it doesn't, you know, it, it actually means something because he is it, he is the best wrestler in the world, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion. Um, the best box office draw, which pretty much means the person who can make the most money for their company. Without surprise, it's John Cena for last year, you know, with his merchandise and everything and his face being on pretty much all the pay-per-views until he got injured. This guy was just bringing the cash, bringing the cash, bringing the cash, and he was selling tickets, selling tickets to the pay-per-view, selling tickets to the Raws, and, you know, pretty much, you know, like I said, he's pretty much, I could kind of argue against this with Batista, because Batista was pretty much in every main event in 2007, but, uh, yeah, John Cena, I have no problem with that. The feud of the year, surprisingly, goes to uh, Undertaker and Batista um, from their WrestleMania match to their Backlash match, to their um, cage match on SmackDown, I believe in May, to the Cyber Sunday match, to the Hell in a Cell of Survivor Series. Every single last one of their matches have been good, if not great. Their WrestleMania match, was, I think, was voted the uh, match of the year by WWE, of course, but um, I mean, that match was pretty much good. Um, I remember they were arguing because Batista thought that um, I mean, people pretty much know I pretty much hate Batista, but they were arguing that they should have been in the main event and not Cena and HBK. After seeing that match, you know, it kind of could have been argued, but I see why WWE did what they did. But yeah, that feud was pretty pretty good. Um, I enjoyed all those matches. The tag team of the year, which pretty much says a tag team that can carry the division by themselves. Um, you know. To no surprise, the Briscoes, they are pretty much the best tag team in the world. Um, I mean, you stick them in any promotions tag team, they're pretty much going to run through every single team you have in there, and they're going to take your belts. Um, the guys, they work so good together, and like I said, no way can argue that they're not the best tag team in the world. The most improved, surprisingly, last year went to MVP. Um, from his feud with Benoit to his feud with Matt Hardy to his... Uh, previous and ongoing feud with Ric Flair. Uh, this guy's been being put over, but not only has he been been put over, but he's doing a great job at you know pretty much holding his own, you know, for himself and everything. So that's pretty good. What I would like to see this year is him being a feud with Undertaker, because Undertaker put you know guys like Orton and Kennedy over, and I think that he could do the same thing with MVP. I think that would be an amazing feud, and it just could skyrocket him into you know, the main event picture, and like I said, the guy pretty much, he, he's gotten in the ring, um, I would like to see a different finisher from him, 
But other than that, he's got it in the ring. He's got it on the mic. He's good at promos. If not, if you don't believe me on that, just go look at, I believe, this past Friday on SmackDown, um, the promo with he and uh, Ric Flair and the, uh, and the MVP Lounge is pretty, pretty good. The best on interviews, um, they gave it to John Cena. I would argue against this, but I pretty much don't have anybody to argue against, so that's fine by me. John Cena, the most charismatic, once again, John Cena, I have no problem with that. The best technical wrestler, best technician, best mat skills, Brian Danielson, of course, you know. Like I said, you're pretty much going to lose if you step in the ring with him. The best brawler also comes from the ROH um, side of the mat, which is Takeshi Morishima. Like I said, unless you are a true technician like Brian Danson, or you have some kind of crazy arsenal of moves, Morishima is pretty much going to take you down. He's going to hurt you. So I have no problem with them giving that to him. Um, the best flying wrestler in Mexico. I haven't seen too much in Mexico. I've seen some matches on uh, YouTube and uh, God, YouTube and Daily Motion. Um, like I said, the guy he's he's so quick. He's he's fast. I believe WWE is trying to sign him. I don't know if that's going to happen, but um, the guy, he's pretty good. I, I, I love his a, um, finisher, which is like uh, a crucifix hurricane run into like a crossbar or something. It's, it's really sick. I really love it. The most overrated wrestler, the great Khali. I could argue Batista in here, but I see why they picked great Khali because they actually put the belt on him. And he had it on there for like three months, so I understand that. The most underrated wrestler, no surprise, Shelton Benjamin, third year in a row. Um, they really need to do something with him now. Give him the ECW title, move him to SmackDown, to the U.S. title, maybe in the world title. But I wouldn't go so fast, but you know that could be a good you know, scenario, an outline for Shelton Benjamin. Because um, that right there, you know, Wrestling Observer voting this guy three years in a row, the most underrated, that's pretty much telling you something. Uh, the promotion of the year, UFC, don't have any problem with that. UFC's got their stuff together and they're bringing in a lot of money, so don't have a problem with that at all. Um, the worked match of the year, which is pretty much the best match of the year, goes to uh, Brian Danielson versus Takeshi Morishima from um, what is that? August 2005, I believe that's um, Manhattan Mayhem. Um, if I'm correct, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I may be wrong. But I believe it's Mayhem and Mayhem. That match was unbelievable. Definitely, you that match alone will sell that DVD. You should definitely pick it up. Um, just going through some other stuff. Um, the best non wrestler, best non wrestler goes to Larry Sweeney. Had no problem with that. He's pretty much the best uh, manager in the business right now. The best television announcer, Jim Ross. Don't have a problem with that, even though he's kind of on the weird side, I have no problem with that because he's the best. The worst television announcer, Don West, who can argue against that. The best major show, which pretty much is the best uh, pay-per-view of the year. Goes, again, second year in a row, goes to ROH, which is the man up. Argue against that. Um, this right here is called like the Class B Awards. The worst major wrestling show of last year, ECW is similar to this member. I believe that was 06, but... You know, whatever. That was still a bad, a bad show. For the second year in a row, the best wrestling mover, Kenta's Go to Sleep. We're gonna argue that. The most disgusting promotional tactic last year. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is gonna be bad right here for us fans. TNA, uh, the signing of Pac-Man Jones and the making it rain, all that garbage. Yeah, it was pretty bad. The worst television. Oh my God. Oh. The worst television show, TNA Impact. What are you going to do? The worst work match of the year. Wow. Chris Storm versus James Harris. Oh my god. Who can forget the blindfold match? It came off so, 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 so bad. Garbage. Completely garbage. The worst feud of the year. Big Daddy V versus Kane. I don't even remember that feud. I think it happened on ECW or something. Whatever. The worst promotion of the year. This is telling you something right now. TNA told us I'm actually wrestling. Good God. It's, fix your stuff. Uh... Let's see, the promoter of the year, Dana White, UFC. The best gimmick, um, Santino. They don't even list what his gimmick is, but, you know, that's fine. Um, 
the worst gimmick, Black Rain, which is pretty much Black Gold Dust. Um, the best pro wrestling book, The Hitman from Bret Hart, and the best uh, pro wrestling DVD, Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen. Um, like I said, pretty good list. Pretty much agree with everything they did this year, other than a couple of things. Um, there was the good and the bad. I could say is TNA, fix your stuff, man. I know you don't want to be on this list for the bad again this year. Just fix your stuff, because that's pathetic. It's the class eight, and I'm out.